I'm here to tell about Jenkins OS and a bit about YOLA and the devices. Uh, my name is Vesa Matti Hattitainen, but everybody calls me Vesku. Uh, I'm program manager at YOLA, so in practice I deal with the daily uh, development of the operating system. And then we have a various uh, customer projects ongoing, so to handle all the project portfolio so that the, we are doing the right things for the right, right customers at the right time. Uh, I've been yet at YOLA almost from the beginning, so the first big recruitment round was 2012, uh, after Nokia was kind of uh, shutting down the, the Linux R&D operations, so uh, I was... Uh, one of the first guys to arrive to the company uh, and at that point we started uh, from the Mega baseline and started making the applications and the user interface and the, uh, of the same physical library so uh, uh, the biggest task in the beginning for me was working on the Selfish browser so uh, we had to choose between uh, existing browser engines and uh, we, we decided to go with Gecko it was, uh, uh, of course, it's open source, and we had a couple of good guys that knew the Gecko engine really well. So we wanted to pick that up and, and then develop the UI on top of that. Uh, before YOLA, I was working at Nokia uh, on the on the N9 project, uh, and uh, and then on the Migo open source side. So we did this. Uh, so that there was like two parallel tracks, so there was the product program within the company and then there was the open source program to, to deliver that same software towards the, towards the open source community. And, uh, and uh, of course there was the collaboration with Intel in, in the Migo, in Migo side of the things. And, and the thing we did in the Migo is we did the basis now for the service operating system. So, that's about me. Let's move on towards the more important stuff, so the actual operating system and the device is running it. So this is where it all started from. Uh, this is YOLA 1. It was uh, first announced about three years ago, so 2013. And about six months later, just before Christmas 2013, it started, we started to sell it. Uh, Mostly, mostly in European countries, uh, some sales in Hong Kong and India, and, uh, and uh, of course it was insane, insane here as well, but I don't know how, how, much, how much it really was visible. But, uh, so it's a dual core device, uh, Qualcomm chipset, uh, 8 megapixel camera, 1 gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigs of, of memory. Um, the, the most notable hardware feature is the other half, so the back cover is not simply a back cover, it is kind of identified using the, the NFC chip, so we can kind of uh, program different stuff based on what kind of back cover you are having on the device, and there's also this connector behind the, uh, the thing that you can uh, connect a different kind of hardware extensions with, so there was for example this uh, three guys that made a hardware keyboard that attached to, attached to, the, to, the, to the connectors. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice device. Uh, one of the, the problems was that the one gigabyte of memory is starting to be, be a little small. So, so what we have is of course the native applications, the safest applications, but we also have an Android runtime so that you can get your uh, you know, favorite social media application running there. Facebook or, or Twitter or uh, maybe it's being conducted here or something like that. But the, the problem with that is that you're essentially driving two operating systems. So the one, one gigabyte is, is a little bit uh, not, not enough or uh, gets quite cramped quite soon. Uh, also, the operating system in the beginning was quite raw. There was many features missing. So we have been delivering software updates. Uh, basically from the beginning, quite often in the beginning and now a bit less in, in this, this year and, and the last year. So after the, the, the basic device, the first device, we, we started working on the tablet project. So this was a Indiegogo campaign to build a tablet based on Yolla. And obviously when you do a tablet, that is a, 
a lot bigger display, uh, a lot sharper display, so it's a, it's a retina class display, so 2000 something times uh, 1800, so pretty much the same amount maybe that's in the, in the iPad, so that's a huge amount of pixels. So technically it demanded much more uh, acceleration towards the graphics pipeline to get things like the browser keeping the frame rate of, of 60 frames per second and stuff like that. And, and in parallel uh, we kind of had the, the, the feedback of uh, one and a half years of real life usage of, of the OLA device. So we started to understand that what kind of demands customers had towards the user interface. So the, there was a lot of feature requests that do this, do that, improve this, this is not great, and stuff like that. So we did this uh, uh, Selfie 2.0 project to, to make it work in the tablet so that it technically the application scale, but on the other hand you get the usability so that the, 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 the feeling of the device is good and, and to get the kind of learnings that we had towards the, the operating system. Uh, so the sh tablet software was ready uh, about nine months ago, but we had some financial troubles at that time, so, so, so it, it really did not end up in the market in the way that we wanted, so it, didn't, it never ended up in the, in the open sales, and instead we just shipped kind of a small batch towards the, the first people that, that booked this tablet, and, and we are in the middle of a kind of refunding for the rest. So, but anyway, uh, it was a big step forward towards the operating system so that it kind of scales up towards different resolutions, resolutions and, and different use cases. Then, this is the, the kind of latest device. Here, the kind of biggest learning thing is that, that uh, this is not a YOLA device. This is called, from an com Indian company called Index. So we are now operating system licensor, and this is the kind of model towards we want to move into. That we have a, a network of collaborators that take service operating system into use, and Yola would be the, the operating system vendor, and Yola would be um, providing services uh, depending on the use case. So if it is something like the corporate use case, there's a different kind of customization needs. Uh, one of the biggest things in the hardware wise on this device is that uh, this is the first dual SIM device. So, uh, of course, we have to integrate the dual SIM functionality in the operating system in a, in a competitive manner. Uh, other than that, uh, it's fairly typical uh, lower end hardware. So, it's not strictly low, low, but uh, in, the, in the lower end. Uh, so the devices that fall into 100, 200 uh, price range would have about the same kind of hardware. So it's a quad core, quad core, two gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigs of flash, eight megapixel camera on the back, two megapixel camera on the front, um, uh, 4G of course. So uh, and the 720p display, which is it's and 5 inch display, so it's, it's quite okay. And uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM really makes a, a big difference, even though the kind of a, a leap in, in the computing performance was not much, or, or but the, the 2 gigabytes makes it much more pleasant to move the task between applications. So, from that baseline, we have made this uh, Yola C device now. So this is a, since that, that device that I showed in the beginning, the index aquafis is targeted for the Indian market and, and uh, we don't know if the index really has ambitions to, to come to Europe or sell in the other places. We wanted to, to have a, a similar kind of device available in the, in the uh, basically here in, in Europe and uh, in, in nearby countries. So the, we have the Yola C device for the community. So it eases up us to kind of a, be able to have a device, even though we are not going to watch back to watch like selling directly to the consumers, but we want to have this developer device now. And this also helps us working with the partners that we have something to kind of show and give them and, uh, and then, then get some development being done. And this this is just shipping next week 
towards the community people that, that registered to get this device and, and uh, we will have a community event in Helsinki next Friday to, to kind of go through go through the current status of safety so always uh, then this is a completely different kind of device this is a called Turing phone so the the company is a startup called Turing Industries uh, it is a it is um, I don't actually know what country is based, but they, they operate in China, Taiwan, and, and the US, and, and, and oh, now in Finland. They, they were actually planning to manufacture this in Finland, which, which to me it sounds crazy that you would manufacture something in Finland. But um, anyway, we are now working on this, this device, so uh, uh, it is a kind of a very, very different kind of hardware. So as you can see, it has these kind of sharp edges and, and the frame is made of liquid metal and, uh, uh, and uh, it lo looks very different kind. But uh, it is a uh, quad-core uh, Qualcomm chipset, uh, 3 gigabytes of RAM if I recall correctly. Uh, it has a full HD 5 inch 5.5 inch display. So it is like the at, at the at this moment it is the highest end device that is running say this operating system and, and we are we are really hoping that uh, we could get it shipping sometime sometime soon but you never know how long these projects take and, and, and touring phone is of course a startup so you know there's always the kind of business troubles that, that small startups may end up facing. So let's see how, how it goes. Uh, in addition, we have a couple of other projects ongoing, but I will not, not go to details on those. Uh, instead, I'll turn our focus to what the community reports. So what we have is uh, we have a, a guideline, our documentation called Hardware Adaptation uh, Toolkit. And community has taken this uh, guideline and started porting safety operating system to various kind of devices. So th there's guidance available, but it of course requires uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, know-how to, to get it done and understanding on how these devices work and how, understanding the Linux architecture and, and stuff like that. Um, so the so this is from the from the. Oh. So uh, this is the, the wiki page of the hardware adaptation toolkit, so what you really need. And uh, there's the porting guide itself in PDF format, so it's quite, quite a lot of stuff. But using this, people have been successfully done it. As you can see, it's a somewhat involved process to kind of get through all of this and, and get full port down. But it is, it is documentation. And really, the best ports, okay, I'll change to next one. So this is from the Merviki, on the other hand, the status of different community ports. And as you can see from the top, there's like uh, things like Fairphone, where display, touch, LED, pretty much everything is green, so that the, the uh, port is, is quite quite well done. And, and similarly, I think devices like Nexus 5 and, and uh, uh, OnePlus X, which are based on the same chipset, are working quite nicely. So there is more than 30 community ports being worked on, on various of levels of, of um, Compatibility. Uh, so, so this is what has happened. Uh, we now have a modern Linux-based operating system. We have been doing uh, continuous updates on it. So I think we, I counted that we have done something like 14 software updates so far, and those are all available to to the first Yola device. 
and uh, now there are more and more devices coming. Uh, there's different kind of screen factors. So we have the, the, the small 4.5 inch screen from the Yola, and now 5.5 inch on the Turing device, and then the tablet device that has uh, uh, even bigger screen and a higher resolution screen. Uh, then we have the community ports to all kind of hardware, and uh, then the Barnex developing uh, new stuff as well. So it has matured quite nicely during these this, uh, three years that it has really been in the, in the existence. So technically speaking, this is the, the software stack we are having. So we have the, the hardware adaptation there in the bottom. So it is kind of a, a separate, and, and that's the, the thing that you really need to do work on when you port the device on a new, uh, port the operating system on the new hardware, work on the hardware adaptation. Uh, then we have the core OS uh, on top of it, uh, which is based on the MER project. Uh, most of it is open source, uh, apart from the, the silica components that is at the moment still, still closed. But uh, it is fairly standard Linux stack, in my opinion. It, uh, the only major difference would be the, using the, the VLAN graphics. So of course the Linux desktop would be using X11, X11 as, a, as a graphics protocol. Uh, software management, it's an RPM based system. Uh, it has the, the user, usual stuff like standard libraries for, for C++ and, and, and then C. Uh, system D is used for the startup, D bus for IPC, uh, what else? Uh, D con for, for configuration. Uh, the connectivity stack, then there's the uh, Coleman, Ophono, uh, Bruce. This is pretty much uh, derived from the Migo. Some work, mostly, of course, we try to keep them up to date and adapt to the use cases, but it is uh, quite safe. Uh, multimedia stack, G, G Streamer, Pools Audio, uh, and others. And of course, then we have the Qt library. At the moment, we are going with the Qt 5.2. So that is kind of a baseline for the, all the user interface we are having. And a lot of middleware as well written in, in Qt. Uh, on top, we have the, the UI side of the things. So we have a lipstick which uh, makes the system UI, and then we have various applications. Uh, in addition to the score, we have an Android runtime that is kind of a, we consider it as separate. Uh, it's not even preloaded in the device, instead, it is a downloadable asset from the store. Uh, then we have a support for the exchange protocol and uh, then uh, text engine so that you have to create the text engine. Uh, I already mentioned that we use the MERP project as the core OS. Uh, there used to be, uh, in earlier days, there used to be two sides of the core. So there used to be this uh, Nemo Mobile for the middleware and then the MERP project as, as a lower level core OS. But those got merged. Uh, to one, one or two years ago, and uh, I, will, I think we covered mostly the, the stuff that is there. Yeah. So, the user interface, uh, we have targeted to make this uh, modern touch-based UI with the 60 frames per second animations and, and fluid transitions and gestures and, uh, and uh, to allow one-handed use we try to optimize the use of the gestures. We try to provide haptic feedback when you activate something, and we try to have sound effects so that uh, some of the gestures you would use even without without watching the device. All of the user interface is written in, in QML, uh, but of course you need to way to access the native data and do complex stuff, and, and for that we use QC++. We have a VLAN in use, and uh, we use Qt VLAN module to handle the, the surfaces, and the lipstick is the, is the compositor. Uh, 
uh, browser engine is based on Gecko and, and the browser UI is open source. And we, we have additionally a good web kit for a couple of the web views we have. So for example, uh, email viewer is based on good web kit and similarly uh, if you log into to accounts like um, Facebook, you will use good web kit for the, that screen. So Lipstick is one of the most important frameworks on the UI side. So the framework itself is, is, uh, is um, uh, open source and it's targeted that you can create the, the, the system UI and window management using it and then you can have uh, a, a kind of instance of it for a particular use case so uh, Safis uses Lipstick to build its own, own UI uh, it is used for compositor so handling uh, the, the windows that are shown so if you have a notification on top of the main UI that would be a window if you do a transition between an application and to the you know multitasking view uh, the transition would be handled with the lipstick uh, uh, this, it is also involved in things like uh, handling uh, screen on off uh, orientation changes uh, and, and stuff like that so it is really essential piece of the core operating uh, what the core for UI. Uh, then we have a same with Silica. So this is the uh, QML component library that Yola has developed. So uh, the kind of things that are Yola specific are, are part of Silica and this makes the user experience so it has the things like the fully menus and buttons and text input and, and stuff like that are, are provided in, in the Silica library. And all of our applications have been developed using Silica. Uh, uh, there will be more talk about the QML itself, so I'm not going to cover it too much in, in this presentation. But anyway, Silica is what really provides with the sale of his life user experience in the applications and uh, we have been developing it right from the beginning and uh, this was like uh, at the time when there was no uh, standard Qt components there was pretty much uh, uh, the old components existed from N9 and there was something for Symbian but Qt itself did not provide anything, anything standard so that has changed a bit and that's why we are in a situation where there's uh, multiple different ones existing in the market. Uh, we are at the moment in Qt version 5.2, but we, we are of course wanting to go up, getting a newer version. I think we are going to 5.6, and hopefully during this summer or uh, early fall that transition could happen. But uh, let's see. It's, it, the work has started, but you never know about the Qt update. So last time we did a Qt update, it was a way bigger task that we wanted it to be. Because it is a core part of the operating system or the applications. So uh, when you touch it, it tends to break stuff. So and fixing it will, will take some time. Uh, best idea on what's What the Silica is really about is the reference documentation we have on the on the selfiesos.org. So this is the this is the landing page. Uh, there's a introduction. Uh, then there's a kind of a application features that are safety specific. Uh, this one is important nowadays. So this is the guidance on what to do, how to scale up, how to prepare for different screen sizes. So scaling, scaling, scaling the user. What what kind of options do you have as a developer to prepare for? That. And then of course, uh, since the Zephyr's UI is a bit different than, than let's say Android or iOS, there are some like pitfalls where the developers tend to uh, land if they if they just don't follow the follow the guidelines. So we have documented some of the common ones here. But uh, then we have the reference that really shows all the components we have and documents their uses like any good reference documentation. But 
that was the, the like a technical side. Now a little bit of the, about the user experience itself. So, um, like I mentioned, the gestures are really one of the core part of this. And uh, uh, then we have the feedback for the optimization for the one hand use. And then we have an ambience, so how the device feel, looks and feels. So let's start from the gestures. So these are the kind of a core gestures we have. So first one is, is uh, well not on the screen, but here. So double tap to make up the screen. Then uh, we have the edge swipe. So if I swipe push from the edge, I can get back to the multitasking view. And if I just peek, I can get back, just going back. So I'm completing it. Then we have edge swipe from the bottom, which brings the application drawer. We have edge swipe from the top, which brings the uh, ambience selection. And and those are the edge swipes. Uh, then we have a pull down for menu. So if I have an inner application like this, and there's this kind of a red indicator on the top, it means is that there's a menu on top, and I can pull from anywhere to open the menu, and then just you know release when I have the one thing I want activated. So update, and it updated the Saint Petersburg weather apparently then. Uh, for navigation. With the application, there's a uh, flix. So let's see good example. So for example, this is a notes application. I pull down to create a new note, and as you can see, there's this small light on the left on the screen. So I can go back just by flicking backwards. Or other option would be to tap it, but uh, flicking is much easier since you can do it anywhere from the screen. And finally we have the long tap. So I'll create a new node here. So there's the, there's the node I created. So I just, oh sorry. I just tap and hold and then you have a context menu. And just, just tap it there and it deletes. And what you see here is a remorse timer. So when the remorse timer is running, you can just tap on it to, to cancel the activity you just made. So this, uh, these gestures really are essential part of the user interface. And, and we have been trying to, to put more emphasis on the gestures instead of having to push around buttons or, or tapping around the user interface. And, uh, well, it's, it's been relatively nice. And then, what you see here is the, the effect of the ambience. So all these background colors here, they are of course uh, from different ambience. So, so the ambience is both uh, the, the kind of a background, and, and additionally it is the mode of the device. So it is also a profile. The most typical use case would be that, that you have one ambience for, for your normal use and then you would have a silent ambience when you activate that, then the device would go, go silent. So, for example, uh, well as a standard I have a, quite many of these silent work, party freedom, salamander, sailing, but uh, I usually just use the default and then silent. So now it's silent. And this is also something that it's not just the kind of built-in stuff. So I can just take a picture of you. Yeah, here you are. And then I can create ambience based on the picture. So it's maybe not the best ambience, but anyway, it is there. So let's see where we go. So there's the picture in a blu-ray form and in the home screen it's the uh, clear picture on the background. Mm -hmm. And of course it's one of the fun hobbies is to take pictures of stuff and see what makes a nice ambience for you.
So, like I said, the, the tablet project was at the same time as we kind of wanted to uh, get to the next level of the user interface. So at that time we, we did the user interface changes, which we call Selfies OS 2.0. And uh, we added one application, we added many new views, uh, we added many new controls, so many different kind of options to the user interface. And that of course increased the amount of UI code we have quite a lot. And more importantly, we then added more and more these animations to, to make the device feel even, even more fluid, so that the transition between the kind of states will feel good. And, and when the, the transition is natural, you have something, it's not just jumping from screen to screen, then you kind of mentally, you kind of understand the logic in the UI better. All right, uh, a bit different kind of job check. So we have, of course, the, the Yola store. Uh, so that is the place where you can install applications from. We have a review process within the company so that uh, we check that the, the applications follow certain guidelines. So the guidelines are uh, so that the applications won't uh, tamper with the, the kind of system, so that the system, it will, those will not break the system. Uh, so that the application will not tamper with the other applications so you can install any applications from the store and you can kind of trust that all the applications will be working uh, and most importantly the guidelines are there so that the, the applications keep functioning as long as possible so what we talk about is this kind of a using stable APIs meaning that, that it is kind of a promise from us that we, we try to keep these APIs always functioning so Whenever we do one of the, uh, let's say, software update number 15, then you will have still your application for working. Uh, then we have the, the harbor, so that is the kind of developer portal, which, uh, which is used for submitting new applications towards the store. Uh, and in the, in the harbor or, or in the store, we support both service applications and, and Android applications and, uh, and there's also some applications from YOLA itself so like, like the, the Android runtime it's not pre-installed on the device so you can kind of choose if you need it or not it's quite big but you can download it from the YOLA store if you like it uh, in addition to this, this YOLA store there is the, the uh, site called OpenRepos it is really interesting one so this is totally open. So it is a it's a, a set of repositories. So anybody can set up their repository here, uh, put an application, put a library, put put basically anything there. It has. A, a huge amount of hacks, so UI hacks and, uh, and, uh, and applications that use private APIs and, and whatever and, and uh, quality may be whatever software update may break this or this may break the device software updates the other way around as well so I can, I can only recommend this to advanced users but this, this has really cool stuff in it I mean that's the kind of a true hacker spirit through hacker spirit here and that you can you can find a lot of stuff. Uh, then for the, the rules themselves, this is important part. So this uh, frequently asked question is something that I recommend using if you're submitting to towards the Yola store. So this is this is this maybe does not always explain why the rules exist, but it it should explain all the rules we have. So the rules are related to naming. Uh, this is mostly so that your packaging will not conflict with the system packages and, and the other ones. Uh, so things like uh, application name. Uh, desktop file name, icon file name and location uh, then we have rules about the packaging uh, so uh, how, how does the structure of the package should be done uh, 
uh, where the files should go, how to handle data files, uh, rules that uh, the which libraries you're allowed to link against. Uh, then the naming convention for the files and uh, and the version number system and then uh, things like OS versus device type uh, how to handle icons for in the beginning of course we had only one icon size but now there are different kind of devices so it has gotten a bit more complex now uh, what to have in the in the uh, desktop file uh, the QML what are allowed imports? So this this list. So these are the QML imports you are allowed to use, and this actually points directly to the <laughs> directly to the to the validation script. Uh, it's it's a repository in the GitHub. So this is this is the list that is being used. Uh, then we have similar kind of list for the shared libraries. So these are the shared libraries you are allowed to link against. Uh, you can have authors included within your package, but that requires uh, uh, good packaging skills, let's say. Uh, then there's the DBUS uh, about the runtime. So you can submit Python applications, but that's again, uh, I haven't tried, it might be a bit more tricky. We don't have a paid application support at the moment, but we, there's the contribution system called Flatter that you can give out, you can give out contributions to the workers, you get yourself. Okay, so that's it. And I want, there's also at least one GoLine application that has been accepted in the Harbor. But uh, it's a, it is a fairly standard Linux, so on the device itself you can run almost anything you want, but uh, to get it approved in the hardware you need to follow the rules, and if you are not using Qt C++, it is a bit more tricky. Uh, so the operating system is based on the, op the open source uh, wiki of the Mer project is a good starting point in seeing uh, what's happening on the no, not this one I just co corrected the text okay. yes, so this is the Mer project wiki and it includes stuff like how to contribute uh, what's the architecture like um, what, what kind of things are you using in the MER project? Um, how to use uh, community open OBS, so the open build system, uh, the platform SDK, so that's the kind of the lower level SDK that the that the application SDK is based on and stuff like that. And of course the communication channels, so so I think the IRC is the most important communication channel for the project. But of course there's a book Baxilla, uh, there's a mailing list and the wiki page itself. Uh, the source repositories, so those are under Merge Project GitLab. So as you can see there's a list list of the stuff. Let's see if we can be finger down here. Francis, and here's the sources, for example, for the finger term that's part, part of the project. But uh, all of the stuff is under this this git merlab org, and uh, and we use them as such. Well. So that the, the what the kit has is what we have internally, so it's not something that we kind of lose around. Instead, it's pretty much 
the updates happen pretty much reliably with the operating system. And then there's an additionally uh, the browser and a couple of other components that we that are part of the safety operating system but are not really part of the merge. They are hosted here. And uh, if you're interested in the open source stuff, uh, building it yourself, doing some uh, contributions like fixing bug or something like that, you know, usually it pays to kind of uh, read the docs first and if you still don't understand, then go to the IRC channel and ask. And if you're not too, too annoying in the IRC, then somebody will, will respond. Okay, so this was uh, my presentation on the on the safety always in, in generic. So I was kind of, uh, I will do demos in the later part. <laughs>